because days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns, spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Give it thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Amen. Amen. Can we just hold our hearts before the Lord? and holy name of Jesus. We come this morning, Lord, asking your forgiveness for all the sins that we have committed, whether it be word, thoughts, or deeds. And right now, God, we ask you to examine our hearts. And if there be anything that's not pleasing in your sight, we ask that you bind it up right now, Father God. We ask that you clear out the room, Father God, and allow your spirit to fill it. Yes. We ask that you go from man to man, heart to heart, chest to chest, and breast to breast, Father that you touch the hearts of your people, right. that you give them the strength they need, Father God, to continue this race. And Father God, we know that if it hadn't been for you, watching over us last night as we slept in the song, we wouldn't even draw this breath this morning. So God, we want to say thank you right now thank for you, just being with you all by your side. Thank you. We thank you for your mercies that we see every day, Father. And we don't want to take your grace for granted, Father God, because we know without you we can do nothing. So God, we just ask that you'll continue to lead and guide us and bless us, Father God, in everything that we do, that it brings you glory and not us. So Lord, we just say, have your way today, Lord. Speak to us through your word, Father God. Soften our hearts that we'll hear your word, Father God, and that we'll be doers of the word and not hearers only. Encourage us, Father God, in your work that we may spend more time with you, Father God. Mm -hmm. That you may do the work that you want to do, not just in us, Father God, but in the lives of all those people you will send us to touch. So, God, we say thank you once again. And, Father God, just have your way today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Good morning. Good morning. That's, that reminds me of, of what the uh, old folks used to tell us a long time ago. That the devil will have you going to hell and you will be in your own there. Just remember that. That's what the situation's all about. You be nice to people, but not nice to people. You try to help somebody, what they do, you don't do it your friends. It's just like pouring money water on somebody and trying to tell them what's her name. Yeah. You know? But I'm going to tell you something. This is friendship. And I'm glad that the deal will show friendship in there. Because a lot of people want to show them friendship. You see? So I'm going to tell you something. Friendship is a church of friendship because everybody. That's all I have to say. Now, if anybody has any testimony here this morning, is anybody here that has anything to say about what God has done for you Amen. over the week, what God has done for you over the day, and what God is going to do for you in the coming weeks? Yeah. Well, I'm just going to tell you one thing. I know that God is going to be with me all during the week because I tell you, I'm here at friendship to get filled up to get you through the week. Amen. 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 I'm, I'm thankful to be here today at church, you know, and yes, us, we, we, want, we want to sleep on down here. <laughs> I came here at 8 o'clock in the morning, and I was in and out, but, you know, when he called us, the one lady comes down, so I'm about, oh, it'll be another hour, but I got to go. I'm like, it's yeah, 7.30. They were very respectful, very thankful. They said they might come to church. Talk about me and said they wish to come back. The house, you know, anyway. But I know we go 
this, they 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 they, they, they was like, oh, food is so good, so good. I said, good, because guess what? If you don't take it, it's going to the trash. So we didn't have to trash this. We would have the trash in any way. We would have plated it up. But they took everything. Everything went well downstairs. So all in all. But you know, just stay cool for everything I am. Right now, I'm going through a lot with death and the death and the family. Uh, very close to me because we raised up together. We, she's a cousin, but we shared rooms, so we're more like sisters. Because we did this, we went to school together and everything. And you know, it's, it's crazy because my grandma raised us. So her dad has never been mom. The mom left her at birth because the mother wasn't allowed to have her because she's African American and they're they're white. And the parents left the baby. My grandma left got her. When she brought her home, she had told my mom and them it was their sister. And there's 13 of them. So she's coming up all her life believing these are her brothers and sisters and they're really her aunts and uncles. So we thought this is what she had a good life, you know, and everything with us. But when she found out that her uncle was really her father and has not been around. So now we come to this trying to do something for her. She's going, she says, oh, this for her husband. Oh, just free me and throw me in the backyard. Nobody can care. She lives, she lives in California. I said, well, that's not how I feel. Coming up, I was her protector. I, protected. I was her protector. I was there with her. You know, I've done some things. I could accept. She was always kicked on with this one by this one boy. Well, forgive me, boy, but I took his eyeball out because I was done. As we were second grade in school. I was starting to and I, I told him to leave her alone. And he kept going and kept going. And this day, he just called it. He And hey, forgive me, you know, but it happened. But that taught him to leave her alone. Nobody could her no more. I mean, it, it seemed very mean, but that was just my instinct. I didn't mean to be back to that boy, you know. But so today, when I see him, he says, I'm still here. Respect, you know? So now the thing is, it's hard on my heart because the dad is, the donor is now trying to say, oh, we're not going that to next year. This is what I say, what I say. No, it's not what you say. Because we don't need you, for real. You we weren't there before. So we don't need you to have a service for her or to do something. So I'm like, you know, my aunt, who's an entrepreneur, they call it a family, which is my grandmother. She gives me this morning with a, I, I wash my hands for it. I'm, I'm not going out to I, I, so anything y'all want to do, just call Carol, that's his name. So I'm sitting there, and I'm like, I'm furious. And I said, you know what? I'm going to let it go. I got to go to church. Go get my prayer on. Go get to see my blessings from God and all that. And then, and then call him after the fact, because then I'll be in a better state of mind, you know. But it's all based on the letting know. To me, you're not, you was not by the donor. You ain't never been there to raise it. So right now, you can't tell us what we can't do. Amen. You know? Amen. And by the grace of God, he's going to make sure that, I, that what we choose to do, I know it's going to happen for us. Amen. Because Amen. I said, there's a you send her out here. She said, put her in the dirt and just let her be. No, nah, that ain't right. That, that's not right. Amen. You know? So I'm just thankful for everything. You know, me and my grandmother again after all these years, being able to go see her, and now you know I have to go back home to deal with this. But at the same time, I'm okay with it. Um, because I might be wrong, so she said, I've always been here and protected her as a child. And I'm going to make sure that there's a service for her. Amen. For her to go to her home coming to her. Amen. Yes. God will make a way. It will be merciful, God. Yeah. 
no dominion. Yes. You have none. Yes. You will not be taught by the king. You will not. You know, and I just want to pray for my, you know, my fellow members, you know, because Satan is raging war. Yes. He is raging war in us. In the name of Jesus, now, their families will come together. And you know, that we as a church will come together. In the name of Jesus. I just rebuke you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. Man. I stand with my fellow worshipers. I stand with my sisters and brothers in Christ that you have no power with their right now. Man. In the name of Jesus, I just want to thank you for it. Thank you for your refuge. Thank you for your, just thank you for your protection. Thank you for your guidance. Thank you for your strength. Because there is no one more powerful. Amen. There is no one more powerful. Come on, say it. You are to thank you. Yes. I stand with your word this
sent the outpouring of your Holy Spirit to be sent down on this place. So, Father God, I ask you, let your Holy Ghost rain down. Let it rain down, Father God. Pour your Spirit upon us. Let it go from heart to heart, breast to breast. Find us all of the one accord that we can come and lift up your holy and righteous name. Like you said, if I can lift it up, I will draw all the way back to thee. So, Father God, we're faithful to our part. We know you will be faithful to your part. So, Father God, empower us, Father God, just to come and worship you and to lift your holy and righteous name up. And, Father God, those who are still pressed out, give us a chapter verse to the first. Hope is destination. Let us be filled with your spirit. 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 Let us be filled with your spirit.
this for us. That Lord, you will part the Red Sea, God, that you will give us the power to put down our staff, God, in the name of Jesus, and then walk in the callings and the giftings that you've given us. I pray, Lord God, that Satan will try to have his way here, but he cannot have his way here. He shall not have his way here. And we stand up against him right now in the name of Jesus by calling on the name of Jesus. That he shall flee. And that, Lord, when temptation shall arise to try to get us to do our own thing, that they shall not be so. And if we have an ox against our brother, we should be good enough to go to them, God. I pray, Lord God, that we will be able to stand up in boldness, Lord God. Give us that boldness that we can do so. That, Lord, that we're not looking just for numbers. We're looking for quality. We're not looking for somebody just to fill the pew. Oh, yeah. We're looking for somebody who's willing to work in the vineyard. Amen. And help our pastor. And help the deacons and help the trustees and help the ministers, God. I pray that you would send forth people that have that heart, that have that mind. Fill this place with your people. Yeah. Fill this place with your heart and your mind. And that, Lord, when those who don't know you come in the door, that they Amen. see you. Oh, yeah. I pray that it will be done and it shall be done. And by faith we believe it. And we all agree by saying, Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord another hand. Show us your hand. We're going to start some of these blessings that God blessed us with. We're going to claim some of these promises. Amen. 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 We're going to live for the Lord and not for ourselves no more. That's all right. We're going to get on with the worship part of the service when we give unto God because he's so free to give to us Amen. daily. Amen. So we want to dig in our pockets and say thank you Lord and try to keep this church going in the right direction. Amen? Amen. So we want to ask our ushers and our trustees to help us. We want to ask our musician to help us with some happy music. Amen? And we're still looking for the cheerful givers. Alright? Round up this morning. Round up smile. Because God loves you. Amen. 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 While we make ourselves ready, can we just humble our hearts and ask God to bless our giving? Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to go in our pockets. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to walk down this aisle without being carried. So, God, we just say thank you one more time, and we just ask that you receive our blessings. We just ask, Father God, that you shake them, that you press them, and that you allow them to run over into your kingdom, Father God, that you may get the glory in everything that we do. And we'll be careful to give you praise, honor, and the glory. In the name of Jesus, we say, Amen.
gives us a divine paradigm that all leadership should follow. And the first model that Elijah and Elisha demonstrate in their relationship is that it shows the importance of a predecessor having a successor. Because someone with a greater mind than mine said, success without a successor equals failure. Simply, the reason is that it leaves no one to carry out the work. Amen. Also, it is biblically sound when your successor asks not only to walk in their predecessor's shoes, but to ask to have a greater ability than the one who preceded them. Amen. Even Jesus said, the works that I do, you shall do also, and greater works than these shall you do. Because every parent or parent figure should want their sons and daughters to have a greater success than them. But soon after Elijah departed, Elisha became God's spokesman to the northern kingdom. Elisha's life was filled with signs and proclamations, warnings, and miracles. Two of the most memorable are in the chapter four. In chapter four, the first one, the first miracle was found in chapter four, verse one through seven. And that's the miracle of the flowing oil that paid the debt of a widow. And the second miracle in our text that was read for your hearing, the healing of a Shumanite woman's son. These micro miracles validates that God is intricately involved in all of our human affairs. In other words, we know God is involved with the grandeur of life, but also God takes time out of our individual concerns. Some of y'all shout right there. I know it's 
a little early in the sermon to shout, but you should shout knowing the fact that it's worth it knowing that God is intricately involved in my personal stuff. Y'all better help y'all give God a hand of praise on that. God is so, you so, have such a close relationship with God that he is intricately involved in all of your human affairs. Come on, y'all. in touch with a dead situation. The Shunite woman's son was suffering from heat stroke while working in the field. This is the same son Elisha prophesied to the Shunite woman that she would bear. They carried the son to her and he dies while sitting on his mother's lap. She takes the son who had just died and laid him on the bed of the man of God. Let me inform you, this was the same bed she had made preparations for Elisha to rest in when he passed that way. See, the Shuvanite woman has traveled five to six hours to Mount Carmel to see if Elisha could turn her dead situation around. And initially, Elisha sends his servant Gehazi with his staff to lay it upon the face of the child, but the child didn't awake. Elijah goes in and shuts the door behind him and the text word that he laid upon the child. He put his mouth upon his mouth, his eye upon a child's eye, his hand upon a child's hand, and he stretched himself upon the child. Literally informing us that Elijah was in touch with a dead situation. That might mean, that might not mean anything to y'all, but touching something dead, according to Old Testament law, could have made a person's ceremonial unclean. But it comes in a time when a personal moral duty of piety and benevolence dispenses the law. So our narrative totally, literally depicts Elijah being in touch with a dead situation. But for our intent and purpose, I believe we ought to interpret our narrative figuratively. And I believe God is using this literal situation so that we can apply it figuratively in our lives because something can be alive literally but dead figuratively. In other words, something can literally be active but figuratively dead at the same time. Or something might not have little expired, but yet figuratively it has no use. Y'all help with somebody. See, some things literally might have options, but figuratively all the options have been exercised. So figuratively we have some dead situations in our lives. Some of us are on dead jobs. Some of us are in dead organizations. Some of us are in dead relationships. Some of us are in dead marriages. Some of us are in dead churches. There are some dead pulpits. There are some dead choirs. There are some dead ministries. There are some dead deacon boards. There are some reasons why that we need to stay in touch with a dead situation. It may be the reason God has you in the dead situation is for you to stay in touch with the dead situation to turn it around. That's why I stop by and encourage you to stay in touch with a dead situation. And I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that God stayed in touch with me when I was dead in my trespasses, when I was dead in my own sin. God didn't give up on me. Y'all know this about it. I wish I had churches for it that knew what I was talking about.
at one time or another in our lives. So why should we stay in touch with the dead situation? That's the question. That's what I want you to go home with. I want you to be able to answer the question, why should we stay in touch with a dead situation? Well, the first reason is we should stay in touch with a dead situation because it puts us in a position to receive a sign that life is still possible. Our text reports that when Elijah touched uh, and stayed in touch with his dead situation, he put him in a position to receive a sign that life was possible when the flesh of the child waxed warm. Elisha would, would never have been able to feel the temperature of a child rising if he wouldn't have stayed in touch. The text reports that he went up and laid upon the child, put his mouth on his mouth, his eye on his eye, his hand on his hand, and he stretched forth himself upon the child, and the flesh of the child waxed warm. Some of y'all shout. I don't know about anybody else, but the writer in the text raised my theological curiosity to why is a writer given such descriptive detail on how Elijah laid upon the child. Now to pay close attention to the particularities of the text, there has been and has to be a reason why the writer is being so descriptive and informing the reader. Elijah put his mouth upon his mouth, eye upon his eye, hand upon his hand. So my question is, what is the writer of the text depicting in the description of how Elijah stayed in touch with a dead situation. I believe since the subject in the text is dealing with the dead situation, the writer in the text is teaching us when we are dealing with dead situations, we have to be willing to breathe for them that can't breathe, to see for them that can't see, and to feel for them that can't feel until their dead situation turns around. And as long that suffocated them, you have to keep on breathing the breath of life in them. As long as their dead situation blinds them, you got to keep guiding them through life. And as long as their dead situation has numbed them, you keep having empathy for them until their feeling comes back. And I didn't say staying in touch with dead situations is going to be easy. And you're going to have some restless nights. And you'll have some weary days.
in the child's body. You got to remember he died on the lap of his mother. His mother put him on Elisha's bed in a room that she had built for when he would pass by through that way. He had some place to stay. And he put his eye, his mouth upon his mouth. Eye upon his eye. Hand upon his hand. And he stretched forth and he felt the warmth come back Amen. into the child. Amen. Another reason why we should stay in touch with the dead situation is because miracles don't always happen instantaneously. Hey, we text report that in verse 35, Elijah returned and walked in the house to and fro and went up and stretched himself upon him. And the child sneezed seven times. And the child opened his eyes. For some reason, we generally equate miracles happening instantaneously. But all miracles don't happen right away. Just like in our text, Elisha had to return to the house to touch the dead situation one more time. That is why we shouldn't give up on a dead situation. Because my fear is, the moment I'm ready to throw in a towel and give up on a dead situation, just might be the moment God is ready to move and turn that situation around. So my fear is finding myself out of sync with God. But here it is. What I believe is the motif that the narrative is teaching us don't ever put a number on the times you're going to reach out and touch somebody. Oh, I think I listened to this thing a long time. I just got to shout somewhere. Don't ever put a number on the times you're going to reach out and touch somebody. See, we're good at putting a number on how many chances we're going to give a person. I'm saying that we're going to give them one more time. Why shouldn't we put a number on a chance to give a person? It's because God didn't put a number on you. Because if God would have given up, you would have given you a number. We would have ran out a long time ago. That's why I'm so glad that God continues to come by my way time after time. It wasn't the first time I met Jesus. It wasn't the second time that I heard about Jesus and I came down the aisle. It wasn't the third time.
in a dead situation. Elijah returned, walked into the house, and once he stretched himself upon him, the child sneezed seven times. And the child opened his eyes. It is evident at this junction of the narrative, this child has discovered, is, the, is recovering by the child sneezing and opening his eyes. Once again, the particularity of this text raises my theological curiosity. My question at this point in the text is, why is the writer associating the child sneezing seven times with the child's recovery? For, first of all, a sneeze is a convulsive expulsion of air from the lungs through the nose by the mouth in an involuntary action. Well, I think I said something. In other words, when a person sneezes, they have no control over it. Just try to stop the next time you want you need to sneeze. They can't stop. And all they can do is let it happen. Secondly, a common verbal response to a person sneezing is, God bless you. Or when we want to show that we are bilingual, we will respond to a person sneeze by saying, Gesundheit. The German word for health. Now watch this. Putting two facts together, since a sneeze is an involuntary expulsion of air, from the lungs that God blessed us with, I believe when we sneeze, it's God's way of reminding us that it is Him who is breathing for us. <laughs> Just like in our text, the child didn't breathe by his own power. But God calls this child to sneeze and set the motion of involuntary action in heaven and at heaven. In other words, are told and we were told to pray to breathe on our own. And you might think you're breathing on your own, but I hate to inform you the oxygen that you are sucking in, you didn't have any part of manufacturing it. Nobody can breathe without it. That's why the psalmist says uh, that everything that had breath, oh, I'm sorry. Do I got a church this morning? Is that
his faith in God. Elijah's faith in God was the difference maker between the Shumanite woman's faith and Elijah. See, the pattern in Elijah's ministry was he did not do things for people directly, but gave them an opportunity to work with God and to trust God on their own. Initially, Elisha sent his servant Gehazi with his staff to lay it upon the face of the child. But the Shunite woman failed the test to trust God and go with Gehazi to lay Elijah's staff on the face of the child. See, the laying on the staff did not heal the child, but the Shunite woman didn't fully embrace the promise with, the, with full faith. See, the Shunite woman told Elisha, I will not leave thee because she thought the power to heal was more connected with Elisha than God. Mm. See, this narrative is teaching us who we have to have our trust in. That is why upon Elisha entering into the house, he shut the door and closed him and the child up together so when the light would be restored, the child's light, he didn't steal the glory from God. Amen. And all of us better be careful when we try to steal the glory from God. Because it is He that has made us and not we ourselves. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Enter into His courts with thanksgiving. Enter into His courts with, with into His name with thanksgiving. Into His courts with praise. Be thankful unto Him and bless His holy name. For the Lord is good and His mercy is God. 
out of here if they haven't accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Amen. Make us say, I want to give you an opportunity. Amen. 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 To accept Christ if you have not really did. Church say that. Yeah. Yeah.